Hey guys, S Dodley here with another sandbox video. Um, today we're going to be talking about land, terrain, and the camera controls inside the uh, the game maker itself. So if you haven't already, head on over to the sandbox website um, and click the create button where you can download the game maker and make sure you've signed up for an account. Once you've done that, we'll get on over into the game maker. There you can log in. Alright guys, once you've logged in, you should get a screen like this um, showing all the games that you've created, although you may not have any if this is your first time. Uh, blanked out one just because it's something I'm working on and don't want to give anything away. Um, you can also look at templates, um, which are a whole bunch of templates that the sandbox have, themselves have made and they're really useful in figuring out exactly what the logic um, in the game maker does. Um, so as you can see, I've already copied a couple of those from their templates just to make them my own and, and fiddle and change and see what I can do with them. Um, you can also go to the gallery and have a look at the featured experiences if there are any um, and all the other latest experiences from everyone that's uploading to the game maker. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create a new one. Um, we'll just call it YouTube. Um, and we'll go with a meadow theme. You can choose from lake, desert, nether or meadow at the moment. Um, and we're going to go with a one by one land size. So for anyone that's wondering, um, land is 96 meters wide uh, in each direction. So it's 96 by 96 and 128 from top to bottom. So we'll just click create and sandbox will load us in. All right, and we are loaded in. So as you can see, we've got a flat plot of land with a couple of rocks on there, and it's sort of pre-filled a little bit of land for us down to the bottom as well. Um, so as you, as I said before, it's 96 across, 96 across in each direction, and it's 128 high. So just for those of you that didn't know this, what, what we're going to do is we're going to go and put a block in our hotbar. So to do that, you can just drag it straight on. Um, I'll go over some of the camera controls in a minute, but first off I just want to show you that the land actually goes further below where it generates down to. So you can actually see, what we'll do is we'll go like this, it actually goes quite a way down um, further than what it generates to. So if there's any of you that are starting out, just make sure that you're going all the way to the bottom and you're not just going to where this is generated to. Um, and just so that we can see, I'll just put this on top of each other. Um, just so that you can see how high this goes. A little bit messy, but that's all right. Oh, there we go. So you sort of do just get just above the cloud cover. And I think I'm just about the top. Oh, a little bit further. How far are we going up? There we go. See, I can't put any more up. So, just so that you can get a sense of scale, that is how high a piece of land can go. So it gives you a lot of options when you think about, um, I've seen a lot of games that have actually sectioned off um, parts and they're pretty much completely inside and it actually gives you a lot of space to play with if you do that. Um, right, so let's jump into it. Um, the, we've sort of gone over the land basics, let's get into the camera controls. Um, so if you want to see a control list, you can go up to this cog in the top right and click on view control list and there you can see all the different controls. Um, probably the most important ones that I use most of the time, um, the middle mouse button will sort of pan you around. Uh, w, A, S and D will move you much like a first person shooter, uh, left, right, up, down. Q and E will rotate you around. Um, now, this one I haven't used much, but I think I'm going to need to. Alt and clicking will actually rotate you around, so that's Alt. Um, and Alt and left, uh, sorry, Alt and right click will uh, pan, sort of rotate you around where the camera is at the moment. Um, so that's actually super useful, being able to do that. Um, uh, spacebar will lift you up and down. Oh, sorry, we'll lift you up. Um, C will take you down. And again, holding shift will um, sort of increase the speed at any of these are done. Page up and down will we'll sort of rotate your view up and down. So you look up and down. So that's page up and down. So as I said before, you can drop and drag um, blocks onto your hotbar. 
um, and then you can just click on them or use the number keys to switch between them down here. Um, we'll go over to some of the terrain controls. So up here you've got the different tools you can use with the terrain. Um, a left click will place it and a right click will delete it. So the free one can be used in a lot of different ways. If you click and drag, it will go caught in a corner. Um, if you click and drag and hold control, it will actually redo what's already there. So it will sort of paint over the top. So if I want to paint over this one, I can hold control and it will paint over that. Um, if you click and drag and hold shift, then it will let you uh, extend it below or above. Um, it can be a little bit sketchy, but if I look release, it does actually do it. Um, so that can be super useful when you're building up either landscapes or, you know, skyscrapers um, and things like that. Um, the right click to delete is pretty much self-explanatory. Click and drag. You can also undo things. So once you've done something that you don't want to, you can undo. Um, there are the big buttons up the top left here, which will do that for you. Um, but I like using the hotkeys, which are Control Z to undo and Control Y, y to redo, um, which is super useful when you stuff things up, which I do pretty often. Um, so the other tools that you've got available to you are Diamond. Um, I love using this one for land generation um, in terms of just making a quick sort of horizon um, if you're wanting to make a mountain range or something like that, you can click and drag it. Um, and there we go. And you can just sort of go back and forth like this and it gets a, um, there you go, you got a hill straight away. And you can sort of go around like this to, um, to just fill it in. And you can, as with the other tool, you can right click to remove it. So just like that, we've got a hill and a cavern. Um, so you can change the width and height of it. You can have a small one, you can make it humongous. Um, yeah. The square one is much the same. It will let you change the individual width, height and depth, whereas with the diamond it's all linked. Um, so with this one you could uh, make the height quite high and make walls pretty quickly with that. One thing to consider is it does, uh, where you're pointing is the centre, so that will affect things below as well as above. When you're clicking on the ground you can only see what's above but as you can see here it is actually going below as well. Um, and lastly the sphere. Um, now this is much the same as the square. Um, let's go all the way six and we can get a nice sphere going. What if we go eight? How's that go? So I mean that's just another building tool for you. Um, I think that's about all I wanted to cover in this video. It sort of gives you a brief overview of the uh, controls, terrain controls. Let me know if I've missed anything and I can go over it in another video. Um, and just remember that there's a lot of space to play with on a one by one land um, if you use it uh, in a smart way. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.